Despite what you think you're hearing right now, that is about 85% of Shadow Brides. This isn't a game that you can play it anywhere with the volume turned on. I tried, and the looks I got were those of sheer and utter disgust. Then I explained to my wife that it was for a video as opposed to, you know, something else, and she let me off the hook. Hey, my name is Sticks, and welcome back to another episode of The Worst Gotcha Ever. The purpose of The Worst Gotcha Ever series isn't to solely criticize a game, nor is it to praise it unconditionally. Rather, this video series exists as a means with which to both critique and to complement various facets of a gotcha game that I experienced over a set period of time. Sometimes days, sometimes months. If you enjoyed this series, make sure to like the video, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, hit that little bell notification because YouTube told me that if you don't, well, uh, this year your waifu RNG will be horrible. Oh, and make sure to check out the last episode in this series at the end of this video. Before we jump into this video though, I do want to take a moment here to thank all of our incredible patrons over on Patreon. Your support is absolutely incredible, and I cannot thank you all enough for being a part of this journey. Also, if you have a moment, consider following me over on Twitch. I stream gotcha games here every weekend. Shadow Brides describes itself as a dark gothic strategy RPG where you recruit some of the hottest vampire, witch, and demon waifus in creation. All of which, for whatever reason, seem to be thirsting after you, something that I'm sure we can all relate to IRL, because we're all absolute chads and women love us men that play waifu collecting gotcha games. There's nothing more impressive or manly than walking into a room filled with people and proclaiming that you have the perfect set of artifacts and a fully upgraded team in Genshin Impact. The respect that you receive after making such a proclamation is immeasurable. When starting out, I expected a basic generic gotcha game. What I got was actually very different. This is a game that is most definitely targeted towards an older audience. That is made very evident within the first several minutes of the game. Admittedly, I've had to omit quite a bit of gameplay because it's all incredibly not safe for work and would result in me not being able to actually post this video. We take on the role of, uh, well, uh, you know what, I'm gonna be completely honest here, I don't think I was paying enough attention to the story, of which there is very little, to be able to tell you who we are. They refer to us as master, and they want to do all manner of explicit things to our bodies. We're the main protagonist of every etchy anime series, essentially, that, uh... Well, unfortunately for us, also happens to look like Shrek when you got turned into a human that time. We then spend the next few hours slowly auto-battling through a variety of different chapters populated by one-stage missions. Each mission has a single fight, typically with a certain unit that needs defeating. Upon defeating that unit, every other unit immediately disperses and you successfully complete the battle. Meaning, splitting your attention between your main target and your off targets is relatively pointless. Especially given in the 10 days that I played this for, it never required more than a few hits total to emerge the victor. Gameplay is very basic, it encourages you to auto battle, with every new feature unlocked having a blinking indicator saying click me so you don't actually have to play me. When the studio is that desperate to have you not play their game, there's probably a core issue with it. And believe me when I say that I have found multiple issues. Gameplay is as simple as throwing down a unit onto a horizontal grid. They then auto-engage enemies. This is the exact same for PvP and for every game mode. Every enemy is a variant of a waifu that you collect. There is very little in the way of diversity with regards to enemy models. This got repetitive very quickly as I'm sure you can imagine. It might just be me, but I'm also not really a fan of the in-game models. Some of the portraits look pretty good, some actually look exceptional, and then some are completely ripped from other games. Within the first 15 minutes, I was literally introduced to Siri, and that kind of set the tone for the entire game. If they cannot even design unique characters, what chance do we have that they're competent enough to craft a worthwhile experience otherwise? But in battle models just looked so cartoony, not chibi, not anime inspired, just cartoony, like something out of a Disney or Nickelodeon game. 
And don't get me started on having to listen to a dozen girls all moaning at each other every encounter, Jesus. Outside of chapters and missions, the game had a variety of different game modes, which all consisted of, primarily, fighting the same type of waifus that you've been fighting all this time, with the difference being in the form of your reward. Currency, XP, materials. If you're going to provide players alternate game modes, at least make the enemies specific to the mode that you're playing. And while there are numerous modes, I don't really feel like elaborating on them because I think it's kind of redundant. They're all the same thing, and the footage that I acquired was all the same. This is a very low effort attempt at introducing an alternate means of progression and additional means of acquiring the required currency to progress. After playing for a while, I unlocked the PvP arena. I thought this might be a great opportunity to assert dominance over inferior players. And while I excelled quite significantly, much to my own surprise, at one point making it into the top 100 players in the entire game after a mere 5 days playing, I ended up ultimately being disappointed. Not only is the PvP completely autoplay, not only do you go up against, once again, the exact same type of waifus that you've been engaging in every other game mode, but it's also horribly unbalanced. Let me set the stage here. For three days, I fought against other players with roughly 5,000 to 10,000 combat power, when I had approximately 20,000 to 25,000. That was very one-sided and not remotely fun or challenging for me as a player. Then day 4, all of my opponents were players with 50,000 to 60,000 combat power that would one-shot me. This is horrendously unbalanced and not at all rewarding in any capacity. PvP should be a challenging experience, it should be a test of power, of strategy, but you should always have a chance of victory and a chance of failure, not a 100% chance of one or the other. That doesn't breed competition, that makes people want to avoid it as a feature. What's more, there is a button located down the bottom right of your screen that actually lets you skip the PvP encounter. What type of PvP lets you skip the actual PvP? Honestly, the more I played this game, the worse I felt about investing time into it. Typically, of the bad gotchas that I've played as a part of this series, there are redeeming qualities that stand out that allow me to complement certain aspects of them. I don't think I've played a game yet where I've had absolutely nothing positive to say until now. Sure, there are some interesting things that you can do with your waifus, making out with them, raising their affinity, taking them out on dates, but there are games that do it much better and offer a much deeper, much more rewarding experience, both with regards to the dating sim aspect and the game overall. Shadow Brides is a very rushed game that feels horribly low quality, repeatedly reusing assets, characters, animations, models. I've never felt so uh, so violated by such a, a shallow, hollow experience lacking any real depth, which makes sense, I guess, as to why so few people have taken the time to download Play and Rate It. And in retrospect, this is probably why I made it into the top 100 players on the PvP ladder. Oh great, now I'm overthinking things and making my accomplishment feel less significant. Overall, I would not recommend this game to anyone. I would advise you ignore it if you ever come across it and let it slip from memory further into obscurity. Now, if you're looking for the previous episode in the Worst Gotcha Ever series, you can find that via this video right here, or if you're looking for a list of every confirmed upcoming gotcha game releasing this month in the month of January 2023, then this video right here is what you're after. 